Welcome to Electron Line. Now it's time to find the Kalman gain. To find the Kalman gain, we have to use the process covariance matrix, the updated one or the predicted one, and we have to use the error or the uncertainty in the observation. Remember, the observation errors are determined right here by those numbers, and we'll use those to make the matrix R. Let's go ahead and write this in, see what this is equal to. So this becomes equal to the matrix that we had here that was 425 and 25. Remember, we got rid of the, the cross terms. We have to multiply that times H transpose. Now, what is H? Well, H is simply a matrix that allows us to change the format of this matrix into the formats, format of the Kalman gain matrix. Now, it turns out the Kalman gain matrix is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. And this is also a 2 by 2 matrix, which means we only need to have a matrix that looks like this to convert it, just simply the identity matrix. So in this particular case, the H transpose simply becomes the identity matrix. Same in the denominator. We have the matrix here, the process covariance matrix that we just calculated, the predicted one. This had 4, 25, and 25 on diagonal, 0 and 0. And here the H matrix is going to be 1, 1, 0, 0, which means the transpose is also going to be 1, 1, 0, 0, because the transpose of an identity matrix is itself. And now we have to add to that the R matrix, and we have to have that in the same format as the covariance matrix. So we look at the errors, the errors in position and the errors in velocity. They're going to go on the diagonal line. Of course, we have to square it to have it in the same format as the covariance matrix. So this becomes 25 squared, which is 625. And this becomes 6 squared, which is 36. And we'll put in zeros for the cross terms. Again, in this example, we're simply going to ignore the cross terms. Now, when we multiply anything times the identity matrix, we get itself back. So this becomes equal to, in the numerator, we get 425, 0, 0, 25. In the denominator, we'll get the 425, 0, 0, 25. And we're going to add to that the, ma the matrix that we got from the observation errors, 625, 36, 0, and 0. So we go ahead and add the denominator. This becomes 425, 0, 0, and 25. And here in the denominator, we get, if we add this together, that gives us 1,050 in the upper left corner. And 25 plus 36, that gives us 61 here, 0 and 0. And now all we have to do is divide the numerator by the denominator. For that, we need a, calcula a calculator. So 425 divided by 1,050, we get 0 0.405. 405, 0, 0. And here we have 25 divided by 61. We get 0 0.410. Now this is what we call the Kalman gain matrix. It's going to adjust the measurement that we get from the observations in the position and it's going to adjust the measurement we get from the observation in velocity. Notice the bigger k is, the larger k is, that means the smaller r was, that means the smaller the error was or the uncertainty was in the measurement. The smaller k is, the bigger the error in the, in the measurement because the bigger r becomes, the smaller k becomes. So this means that we don't put as much value in the observation as we do in the predicted updates using the equations because it tells us that the error in the observations is slightly larger than the error we can expect in the covariance matrix, which then drives the predicted state. What this is saying is that we don't want to put too much merit in the observation. We're only going to take a fraction of the observational update in order to predict the new state, the new position, and the new velocity of the new state. So that's now what we call the Kalman gain matrix. We're now going to use that Kalman gain matrix to update the predicted state. Remember, we had a predicted state, the Kalman gain multiplied times the new observations. Well, where are the new observations? They're right over here. The new observations will then tell us where we think the plane is going to be in the next iteration. So stay tuned and see how we use that Kalman matrix to update our new observations.